Yeah! Welcome back to Playoff Preview Series, the final game of Wild Card Weekend. We are covering the Bucks versus the Cowboys down in Tampa Bay. Monday night football. This team has played once back in week one. It was not a good outing for the Dallas Cowboys. Tampa Bay took it 19-3. to Wasn't really a good outing for Tampa Bay either. It was gross all around, but Tampa Bay, you know, they did what they did to win the game. You play to win the game. The weather, no concerns, 57 degrees, no rain, just normal shit going on in this one. Injury report, no one new added to the injury report. You know, we there's been some uh, injuries to the teams throughout the year, but y'all already know about that. Right now, this game has the Cowboys two and a half point favorites with an over under of 45 and a half. I think the story of this game is really the story of the two quarterbacks and what they've been able to do up to this point in their career as playoff QBs, and they're on the opposite sides of the spectrum. They're on the opposite ends of the earth right now. Yeah. That can't close a fucking screen door. Tom Brady runs right through the screen doors. His statistics throughout the career in playoffs against the spread from a betting gambling angle dominates him. Dak 0-4 against the spread in his career in the playoffs. Cowboys haven't won a road playoff game since January 17th, 1993. Cowboys lost eight straight road playoff games, straight up two and six against the spread. The kids would say the Cowboys have fallen off. Yes, uh, common Cowboy L as it pertains to the playoffs. Kids don't even know anymore. Yeah, so, I mean, I think when I look at this game, I'm still undecided about who Tampa Bay is as a team. Like, I don't really know what their identity is, what they actually do great, which is why I'm taking the Cowboys in this one. Really? Yes. I think they have a lot of firepower on offense. I think they've been inconsistent, but I think they've shown that when they're playing at a high level, they're a great team. I feel like we haven't really seen that. Tampa Bay feels like Brady, this has happened to Brady teams before where it's kind of felt a little bit flat, but you've always had something to lean on. Like, oh, no, they're like defense is elite or like this is elite or this is elite. This feels like that, but with like a filter, like uh, like it, like if a Brady, a normal Brady offense is Coca-Cola, like this year's is like Diet Coke, where something feels a little bit flat there. We haven't seen like the ceiling of one side of the ball or the other where you feel like, okay, this portion of the Tampa Bay Bucks is going to take over the game and win it for them. That's my concern. I, I think that's definitely fair. It, it It is the diet version of, of most Brady teams, but, man, I feel like the ceiling of these of this Cowboys team has just collapsed. I, I feel like it's just it's not a deep team on offense in terms of the weapons. They could really use a guy like uh, maybe Amari Cooper. Mm. I think he would be a nice addition to that offense. And then uh, on defense, I, I don't think it's a very deep team either. I think, you know, you have Trayvon Diggs who can make some plays here and there. But then, the, you know, their second corner is quite literally just a corpse that yeah. they're throwing out behind, there. Behind Diggs, it's it's ugly. I mean, it's all going to come back, uh, come down to, to Parsons and whether or not he can get to the quarterback. Yeah, and I, uh, you know, I don't want to count out Parsons. He's a great, great ball player. But we look at this Tampa Bay's offensive line, and they're getting Tristan Wirfs back. They're getting Donovan Smith back. Both their tackles are expected to play. And, you know, Brady's been a lot better when he's had both of his starting tackles in. No shocker. But I don't know if this is lining up well for the Cowboys. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of torn on it. Like, Wirfs, I think, came back last week or maybe two weeks ago or something like that. He didn't play last week, I don't think. Yeah, I mean, no one was really playing last week. Yeah, Ryan Jensen got put on the IR end of August. Like, he's been out the entire season. They designated him to return from IR, but there's no – he hasn't been, like, ruled into play. If mm-hmm. he comes back, I think that's huge because Brady's a dude who, like, builds chemistry with his centers. I think the center is one of the most important pieces for Brady on the offensive line. That being said, he's missed the entire year, so it's like, does – you coming back into a primetime playoff game, does that make you the Ryan Jensen of old? Does that mean, like, everything is, you know, hunky-dory and shit? I, I don't know if I would say that. So I, th- I think the offensive line, while they're getting a little bit healthier, is still, like, not necessarily their strong point. They definitely got better over the second half of the year. When I look at this, the Cowboys' pass rush, though, we've got some numbers here. Like, one, just overall as a defense, yes, they have some weak points, but they're fi- uh, fifth-best scoring uh, defense in the entire NFL, 20.1 points allowed, second-highest sack rate in the NFL. So... I think it's going to be coming down to, like, Brady's always been a master of getting the ball out of his hands quickly, right? And right. understanding that, okay, this is the team's defense. This is the team's uh, strong points or whatever. How do we attack that? So, listen, taking the Cowboys is scary. Tom Brady getting a home dog game, one of the scarier things in all of sports, especially as a gambler. But like I said, man, like, I go back to Tampa Bay. They're 25th in scoring 
as an offense. They're 25th in yards per play as an offense. On defense, their scoring defense is 15th, so they're like middle of the pack. So that's what I look at, and I'm like, man, if if the Cowboys' best players play to their best ability, I feel like they come home. They come home with this game. So I I think it's tough looking at both these teams from a season long perspective because they feel like very different teams from when they started. Like like week one doesn't even feel like the Bucks and Cowboys that we're about so to that get. Means this the Cowboys week. should not win. Week if week one we're throwing out the door. Different maybe teams I mean flipped around like. I, I see what you're saying that they're you know their their ceiling is the roof their ceiling is high but like it just feels like everybody even Dak has looked bad it, it, I, I'm not getting a boat of confidence from this team within the last month meanwhile I think the Bucks are kind of turning a corner like I've been bashing both these teams all year long yeah you were I've been I feel like you've been a quiet Bucks hater for the last like month and a I've half. been I've been hating on the Bucks since yeah mid season but. I mean, they're they're starting to shut me up, so I'm um, I'm just buying into them at this point. If, I can't beat them, so I might as well join them. What about uh? What about if if they lose here? What does Brady do? I don't know. He probably. What are your options to retire? Like that seems. I think it's. I think the retirement option is almost the least likely option, given that like I feel like he it, he was gonna retire for his family, and his family is just destructed. So it's like, right. So it's, it's like, like now you're gonna no retire to now. Retire. Yeah. No, he should have done it last year or two years right. ago. Now he's playing for another ten, another fucking dime piece he's got in the league. I think I think he probably ends up uh, on another team. I, I think that's very likely too. Although you know, it's always it's always tough to like get Brady uh, like into your building. Not um, it, it's just like such a culture change well, that like I don't know. Yeah. First of all, you need a quarterback availability. You also can't be a dog shit franchise. You also have to be good enough to where like the players on your team want to buy into Brady being there it, it's hard yeah I, I think it's going to be interesting because there are so many coaching options available too there's a lot of teams that like with the right coach and the right quarterback could be in a good spot like the Denver Broncos for one with Animal um, depending on what, where like Sean Payton lands like Brady could follow him somewhere as well I think there's a lot of setups where like a head coach quarterback pairing could be the difference maker of like whether or not a team goes to the playoffs whether or not a team wins a Super Bowl and like a Brady Sean Payton combo would be yeah you know, I, th- I think nice a combination like, you know, uh, Brady Belichick would work well, too. <laughs> just go back there. <laughs> yeah, Brady Belichick. And uh, who do they even have at wide receiver at this point? I don't know. It's never mattered. Yeah, that's actually very true. All right. Um, so, you know, I've been shitting on, on Brady and the Bucks a little bit. But if I'm looking at my prize picks plays, I'm looking at squares that I like the most for this specific game. You're projecting them to go off. I'm projecting Brady to throw for 492 <laughs> yeah. yards, six touchdowns, but just Dak to be a little bit better than that. No, uh, if you're not on prize picks yet, you can use promo code BDGE when you first download the app and deposit, and they're going to hit you with a 100% deposit match. So whatever you throw down on the app, you will have double it to play with, and you could throw it onto Tom Brady over 28 and a half completions. So he has hit that number in 11 of his last 14 games. That is 79%. And as I already said, like, one of the best ways or, or the best way to neutralize a great pass rush. I mean, one, you could run it up the gut often, but, like, I don't think they want to lean on Lenny right now. Their run offense has been, you know, a, a absolute bad. Joke. Yeah, fucking comedic Dak at this point. So I think the, the other, you know, single best way to neutralize a great pass rush is to get the ball out of his hands extremely quick. Mm-hmm. Tons of RB catches. They utilize the RB reception game instead of the run game. Tons of screens to guys like Godwin. This is something that Brady's done incredibly throughout his entire career. This is something that Brady does in Tampa Bay. They actually have, I was a little bit surprised by this. They have the single highest pass rate in the NFL this year, Tampa Bay. I, I mean, I think Brady broke a record for like most pass attempts. This year? I could be wrong, but I, I feel like I heard that. Last somewhere. year, I remember he, he, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers also led the NFL in terms of like just overall pass rate, the percentage of plays that were passes. And I was like, it's going to come down. It came down a little bit, but they still led the league. I thought it was like a little bit more balanced just from, I thought the volume came down a little bit. So I thought both sides kind of like evened out a little bit, but I guess that's not the case. No, nah, they're still throwing the ball a ton. It's just coming in worse situations. They keep trying to, I mean, it's just not as productive, uh, right? Like you, they're doing more passing plays, but it's like second and long, third and long. And it's just, it, it, ha- it wasn't working out earlier in the year. Yeah. Brady doesn't want to get hit. He's going to get the ball out really, really quickly. So 28 and a half again is hit this in 11 of the last 14 games. I feel like this is a game where I, I don't know if either side really, it feels like every time these teams play, and this is kind of a stupid statement considering week one was 19 to three, but when they play, it ends up turning into a knockout game. Like both teams try to control the ball. Like let, let's run the ball. Let's run the clock. Let's, you know, let's get control of the clock. And then it just turns into a fucking free for all shit show. And I feel like that's, what's going to end up happening here. 
Yeah. Do you think uh, you lean towards the under again? <sighs> On the game? Yeah. Uh, what, 45, 45 and, a half. and a half. I think that's pretty high. I think I, I had the score at 24 to 21 Cowboys, so that's 45. Right on the dot. Yeah. I, I had it at a, a Bucks 23, Cowboys 20, but I think even that's a little high. I think we could shave off a field goal from both sides. But, yeah, I mean, that I, I like that square a lot. I think pretty much any Brady square on the board this week is a good one. His pass completion is a good one. His attempts, too, he has also hit that uh, – in 11 out of his last 13 games so you know makes sense when you're throwing the ball f- damn near 60 times a game like your pass completions are going to be high too I also like his yardage prop of 247 and a half throughout the entire year Brady's averaging 271 through the air uh that excluding last week but at home he's averaging 321 so he's been performing a lot better at home than on the road uh, he's gone over 275 in seven out of nine home games. Cowboys defense is in the bottom half of the league in both dropback, uh, EPA per dropback and dropback success rate. So I just think he's going to be really successful getting the ball out under like two and a half seconds, finding Godwin on those screens. Um, Jeez, 733 attempts this year. Yeah. <laughs> That's fucking nuts. That's what I mean. Like, I, I was looking at his past attempts. I was like, 42 and a half. That seems high. And then I, you, you just check it out. I was like, oh, no. He just averages, like, fucking 47 a game. Last year, he had 719 in 17 games, of course. Um, trying to find if anyone in the last, you know, 10 years has even come close to this. Ben had 675 in oh, dude. 2018, but that was in 16 games. So... I was going to say, I remember that Ben Roethlisberger year. Wise, yeah, just they refusing to run the ball. It's insane. It was, it him was and, so bad. Yeah, him and Antonio Brown, I feel like both had like 175 targets that year. It was crazy. Yeah. Uh, going back on my point uh, about Brady's passing yards, Dallas has led up an average of 244 passing yards their last three games. In their last three games, they played Sam Howell, Josh Dobbs, and Gardner Minshew. You see the report that just came out, Sam Howell, like uh, Washington's interviewing OCs, and they're telling all the OCs that are coming in that Sam Howell is their quarterback for next year. Really? Let's go. He yeah. did He did enough in that one game, you think? He, I mean, no. I don't I don't <laughs> give a fuck. I just drafted a lot of Sam Howell in, like, the third rounds of uh, dynasty drafts that I badly needed quarterbacks in, so I'm fucking pumped about that. I mean, that's. I think that's crazy to just do announce him the starter yeah. already. They have no need they to do that. They didn't announce on the start of the, It was just like in kind of like an underground report that while they're having people come in, they're telling they're not really telling them like, hey, we're looking to add to the QB position. Like Sam Howell's probably the guy. Wow. Franchise guy. It's like there, there's like a massive hole in the bathroom. And you're just like, yeah, we're we're not really looking to fix that. <laughs> we uh we got bigger issues. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think the game plan for the Bucks this week is to stop running it on first down, because you suck at it. Maybe just stop running the ball in general. Like, why run the ball when you have Tom Brady and he can dink and dunk his way past this defense? I, I, I just feel like if, if Dallas can't get a pass rush on the Bucks, their secondary can't stay in front of wide receivers. I'm a, I'm a little bit nervous about – I feel like Evans is about to go into cook mode. Like, he was just so bad for, like, eight straight games, and then he had that week 17 where he went over 200 yards. Yeah. I feel like we might just see that kind of, like, push into the playoffs. I'm going to tell you what. I'm a, I don't know how I'm going to feel about that. I think I might hate the man even more. Because I had him on a lot of fantasy teams, and yeah. if you also had him on fantasy teams, you know that you're probably not a big Mike Evans fan right now. So if all of a sudden he decides to go off in playoffs, we're going to have issues. Because yeah. that means I'm What's crazy him is like you feel like he played so poorly this year, and he did, but he ended up ha- he has more he had more yards this year than he did last year and the year before, and he played one fewer games this year. Makes no goddamn sense. I mean, because he had 500 receiving yards week 16. Yeah, 217. And three touchdowns. That's crazy. Doubled his touchdown count in that one game. Whatever. Fuck this. Uh, I'm taking the boys. You're taking the Bucks. We're both taking all of Brady's squares. However, uh, anything else we need to cover on this game? Uh, real quickly, I do want to throw out a touchdown square because we've done that back-to-back weeks now. I think the best touchdown square is Chris Godwin plus Tony Pollard. They're giving you that? Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, Cowboys are the worst team in terms of DVOA against wide receiver twos, specifically slot wide receivers, the Chris Godwin role. So interesting. I think Chris Godwin's in for a big game. Also like his over of receiving yards, just because we're going with that theme. A lot of passing attempts, a lot of passing completions, a lot of passing yards. 
Who's going to benefit? Probably Chris Godwin. Damn, I like that a lot. Yeah, I'm going to take that. I'm going to take the pass completions more and more. Put the fight. best part about that square is it counts as a cowboy and a buck. So you can play it either play way. Anything you yeah, want yeah, there. yeah. Huge. Huge stuff from you, Tony. No dimes. Let's I'm go. In my, I'm in my bag this game. You are. I you started better, out the week the hating this. Fucking <laughs> I know. Ah, oh, shit, dude. They're so going to win. Yeah, I feel like you them. every time, like your NFC South, you need to just stay away from the NFC South. I, I, I might just be a mush in general, to be honest. That's fair, too. Anyone who gets on the mic and talks about gambling ends up being a mush. It's either, yeah. what is the, what's the Batman quote? It's like you either... Uh, I'm not the... You're, you're either like the hero, or you, you stay long enough to see yourself become the villain. Oh, you either die a hero, live long live long enough to see yourself become yeah. the villain. Yeah. I was thinking of, um, I'm, not the, I'm not the mush that people deserve, but the one they need or something. 100%. Nah, I probably got that wrong, but... No, nah, that's like Two Face, right? When he says I'm not. Oh no, he's Harvey Dent. He's not. Yeah, whatever. Fuck this. I'm out of here. Batman going over 275 this game. <laughs> uh, enjoy today's playoff games, or actually, I guess you. Yeah, today's playoff games, and then this game Monday night. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new. We'll be doing this for every single playoff game, giving you a prize pick, squares, all that, and uh, and beyond. Love you. Bye. <laughs>